We built this box out of 6061 aluminum for our project in partnership with Beatty Robotics. Uh, Jared actually made one of these panels on a video that you can see, I think right here. One of the requirements was no tooling marks uh, as you see right here. So we've got to get rid of those. How do we do that? Let's bang through that right now. We're gonna start with 80 grit sandpaper and then work our way up. 100, 120, 150, 220, 320, and then we've got some 400 and 600. I'm not really sure we're gonna need that or get to it. Um, what you're trying to do here is pretty simple. You need everything to basically be on the same plane. So if you feel this, the really smooth tool path in the Tormach with that Pearson vacuum plate really did a good job. So tool marks are the simple fact that you still have some you know, minor variations in height. The fact that this is a recessed pocket means, you know, we couldn't use something like a surface grinder uh, or other, like a lapping plate that would make it a little easier. Um, one thing I will mention is the smoother your tool path, the better and easier this is, the less work you have to do. For instance, on one of them, um, I realized this late in the game, just being honest, or just thinking about it is, you know, we did a much smaller step over and I can wager that this is gonna be a lot easier, less work to clean up. What we're gonna do after we finish the sanding process is blend it all in. We want it to look uniform. And that's gonna be a question of either or both some blast cabinet work and Scotch-Brite. We'll start with the big one. It's a little easier because we can make use of power tools, orbital sander. When you're using a grinding wheel, my understanding was you always used silicon carbide to grind aluminum and aluminum oxide to grind steel, basically the opposite. A lot of the sandpaper actually has some of both, and I'd love to hear, I did some research online, and you could see that I think it was silicon carbide is a little bit sharper, but it wears down more, but uh, I'm curious to see if there's strong opinions on what we should and shouldn't be using here. That's all I'm comfortable doing with the power tools, switch to paper. When we're using the paper, I like to do it under, under water or under a light rinse. We've got this aluminum plate in our hopper sink to keep it flat. It doesn't take a lot. This new paper I actually bought at Home Depot last night. It's 80 grit, 3M stuff. A lot more expensive than the stuff that we bought in the past. I think from, I don't know, Amazon or Enco. Um, but it's got this new like grippy back that does make it a lot easier to hold underwater when you're doing it by hand like this. I'm actually super happy. This is the stuff that I bought from Home Depot. Uh, link in the video description. Uh, the fact that you can use this stuff uh, underwater and rub it really helps. Uh, so I'm actually super happy with that. What the goal is, so this was the, I think I actually only had 80 or 120 on the palm sander, but then by hand 60, and that's the rough work. And that's what you're doing to get all of your scratch, or all your tool marks out. Uh, don't move ahead until they're gone because the process now is basically to get rid of the scratches from the grit before. That's really it. So 60s where you have to do most of the hard work. And again, the more time you put in, uh, the better you go. Before I move on, what I like to do is, you know, run this underwater, put some soap on it, wipe it off or acetone it. Sometimes I'll even jump to like a 320 grit and do a little spot because that'll help show you if you've still got some tool marks, put it in different lighting, um, acetone it, or even grab some polish 
And if you, again, it depends on how critical uh, what you're looking for is. Original here on, the, on this side and 80 grit uh, or 60 grit over here. Let's move up. So the side here that has got the four holes, that's had the 120 sort of 150 uh, second step. And this is still at sort of an 80 and 60 grit on the right. So kind of see where we're going along. Not crazy different. I also want to mention, you know, one of the things that we're not doing here is worrying about flatness. Flatness at a super precision level. The focus is aesthetic, not flatness. What we're doing here was not good if you need to hold something perfectly flat. Okay, the side here with the holes, actually I think it was, I showed it this way last time, that has had 220 and this is still at the 120, 150. So kind of hard to see, uh, but the scratches are there, they're just smaller. The question is going to be, which we'll find out in a minute, is blending this all in. That's what I'm really excited for. 320, 220, uh, it looks good except you see the kind of splotchiness. That's what I'm hoping the scotch right pads are going to solve. So let's give that a try. So these things are incredible. If you don't have these, buy them. We've got uh, sand. I actually went up to 600, although we've got some scratches showing a little bit, which means really if you see scratches, you got to go back to the grit uh, prior to or else they're just not coming out. Um, but now let's try our scotch Bright. this is the maroon ones. There's, I have two different maroon ones, they're, but they're the little bit coarser ones. And let's see what this does. These really help just kind of blend everything together. Um, the scotch Bright wheel that we have on our uh, bench grinder, which we love, uh, they call it like a blending wheel, and it really does just that. It's good for deburring tools and blending stuff together. Um, the nice thing I think about the scotch Bright pads is they're less direction sensitive. Uh, Jared was actually mentioning to me when I was doing this on video, he's like, try going alternate directions. Uh, go 220 grit one way, 320 grit the other way. I'd never heard that before. I'm curious, do you guys agree? Is that a good strategy? Uh, but the nice thing with the scotch Bright pad here at the end is you can kind of come in and, and it's not as sensitive and that helps uh, get into these corners, which is definitely the hardest part on the sanding side. Uh, also, we've got this sort of mill face finish, um, which is actually fine, but the scotch Bright will help just blend all this in so it doesn't look like we have, you know, two different surfaces. Um, I'd be curious to see what you guys say. You know, I was also thinking, should we get a, actually Jared mentioned this, uh, you know, a soda blaster, or can you put soda media in our sand blaster? And um, obviously if we did these a lot, we need a better way to do them. This is not necessarily a good you know, labor use. I also like this idea that anybody can do it. You just gotta get some sandpaper. Some of the stuff that we like uh, and are using are in the video description for links or um, Home Depot, Walmart. And actually, um, it's funny, I'm not a car guy, so I actually usually forget that your typical car stores, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, have usually really good tools, uh, including some of your more you know, unusual sandpapers. I actually just learned that uh, earlier this year. Uh, I was talk looking at different types of oil and the difference between a detergent and a non-detergent oil, I think of laundry detergent, but is a detergent will suspend dirt particles in the bubbles, which is why your washing machine wants it to like take them away. Non-detergent will let them fall to the bottom, which is good if you've got something that like filters it out. Just interesting tidbit, I thought. So I'm sure, I think the camera's probably going to accentuate um, my, I would say this is good, not great. Time out. I'm not happy with how these are looking. I'm just not. And here's the thing. When you've got an outside surface that you've got access to the whole face, this is a great method to, to do it. But with these recessed panels, we don't have that luxury. Um, here is another part of this project. And we took this face, it had tool marks on it, and with a same type of sanding block like this, this was actually uh, 220 grit, so we could step it up even more. Um, and this is, it looks nice. It looks, you, you look at this and you think, okay, I get it, like I'm proud of that. Um, how these panels were looking, I wasn't happy. So, we did go to the sandblaster. We sandblasted them with the aluminum oxide 120, then we switched to, to glassed bead. And here's the thing, this looks great. It's actually funny, the camera really does accentuate how it doesn't like little imperfections, but 
it has a good look. However, the customer had asked, we shot him a little video and they said, you know, we'd really rather them have a little bit of a polished look and not a matte sort of sandblasted look. So from this stage, what's polish gonna do? Let's find out. Good news is it didn't take it back to like that sanded look, so that's excellent. This obviously doesn't look good though yet, but let's just see. Okay. So I really like it. I just needs to get rid of the dirt sort of marks. Well, acetone do the trick. Okay, it's a little bit wet, but I think we're onto something. This has a rough textured, sandy look. This is, feels smooth. Uh, I think it's gonna look good. I've got an idea, I'll be right back. Got it down. I like this finish. Again, the camera makes it look worse than it really is, um, but I like it. Haven't done this side yet. Here's the recipe. Still used, you know, 60 grit to really get the rough tool marks out. Um, and by this point, we've kind of experimented so much that it's not the best uh, experiment, but then the sand blast with 120 grit aluminum oxide, then B blast, and now some polish. Frankly, any polish could be fine. If I do this again, which I think I won't, I think I'll probably send these out to be honest, but um, they, they, it looks like they sell different grits of polish. And, you know, this is polish, so the super high grit. I think they sell some grittier stuff which would probably certainly be something I'd want to try. I'll put it that way. I don't know why this is clogging up on us. Polish. And picked up this little wheel from AutoZone. Doesn't look like it's gonna last too long, but we'll see here. Now we really just have to clean the junk off of the sheet here. So I got some simple green mixed up in the tub and I can use a paper towel to get the worst. So I throw that away. This is where I've always struggled with polishing is, um, I feel like it's not, it's just hard to understand or get, you know, the instant I start polishing, I think it turns black and, I think that probably does impact the end result. Um, not so much here as I'm talking about when you get that mirrored finish using a actual white wheel or sisal wheel or whatever they're called and that stuff. I should probably learn more or read up on that. This is the tractor supply stores wash parts washer fluid. Honestly, if you don't have one of these, there's nothing special about it. And acetone will, will do a pretty similar type job. Um, this is just nice because it's a way to store the stuff. And uh, there's a little pump here that can cause it to recycle through if you're trying to do that. One of those tools you don't need to have, but it, once, once you have it, it's, it's nice to have. I actually would love to hear in the comments below, are we supposed to replace this fluid? I mean, it's probably a year old or more and we've cleaned a lot of stuff with it and I don't filter or anything. I'm kind of curious, does it have a functional, you know, use or shelf life? 
we're done. Um, and I gotta say, it is a pretty cool box. It's a pretty cool project. As I mentioned, when we started this, uh, Jared did the video on making the big plates. It's not hard machining. It's just really easy to screw up, to have a box fit together and to have the joints be flush and have it look right and square. And um, some folks were mentioning in the comments about you know, different ways to machine these weight reducing panels so that you induce less warping. Because it's a five-sided box, it kind of self-corrects to the extent that there is a little bit of play in it. Um, and we got the tool marking out. I gotta say though, um, really, I'd say that was a fail. I was really excited to share when it's an open face surface like the top of this box lid, it really works well when the sandpaper grits up and getting your tool marks out. You can take it to a high grit or a polish. It just works well. These recessed panels, um, I'd be lying if I said I want to do that again or I really love that recipes. We definitely got them done um, and I like it again with the you know, sandpaper to get the rough marks out and then aluminum oxide, bead blast, and then polish and clean. Um, it worked, but um, next time we got to figure something out different. So we're excited to see what's next with Beatty Robotics. Check out their webpage, uh, link in the video description to see more on this robot project. Otherwise, take care folks. See you soon.